welcome to entrepreneurship or a ENT 122 so for today uh, this would be the continuation of the module number one so we will now proceed with the module number two again what is entrepreneurship okay so sige ayan first uh, ayan In the module number two, what is entrepreneurship? At the end of this module, you are expected to first describe the entrepreneurial process. Second is describe the typical characteristics of Filipino entrepreneurs. Third, explain how entrepreneurs think and how they make decisions. And lastly, explain the role of risks and failure in the entrepreneurial process. So, yan yung mga dapat na matutunan ninyo at the end of this module. Okay. Now, the question is, is there such a thing as natural born entrepreneur? Accordingly, there is not. Yan na, nasagot na, nasagot na agad yung tanong. So ngayon bakit? The specific techniques and habits must be practiced and developed by all would be entrepreneurs. Aside from business competencies, entrepreneurs need interpersonal and self-leadership skills too. However, these are often overlooked. Entrepreneurial behavior can be learned and developed. So, yun na nga, sinasagot na, na hindi nga, or, I mean, walang pinanganak para maging entrepreneur talaga agad. So, kapag naging entrepreneur, develop yung skills na kailangan for you to be a good, enter- for you to be a successful entrepreneur. Okay? Ayan. Sabi nga, aside from business competencies, kailangan nga rin daw yung uh, interpersonal and self-leadership skills. Okay? So, yun yung mga kailangan i-develop okay, sa isang tao for them or for you to be an entrepreneur. And then, the question is not who entrepreneurs are, but what they do and more important than business skills can be other competencies that provide a foundation for those for those business skills. So, hindi naman ang tanong doon eh kung meron ba leader. And the question is kung sino ba ang mga, mag- mga entrepreneurs or paano magiging isang entrepreneur. Okay? Now, we will proceed with the three level of competencies which all entrepreneurs need. So, ito yung mga competencies sa kailangan para maging uh, successful na entrepreneur. The first one is the personal competencies. These are your abilities to ground yourself so that you are secure and self-assured in whatever situation you may find yourself. So, example nga daw nito is yung creativity, determination, integrity, and then self-criticism. So, ito yung uh, may kinalaman nito doon sa yung mga personal skills or yung mga uh, ability mo for you to be an entrepreneur. Okay? Yan, tulad nga doon ng creativity, kailangan yan for you to be an entrepreneur. So, not only pag nag-start up, nag-start up ka ng business mo, syempre, di ba, kailangan umira yung creativity mo for you to know or para maging unique yung i-offer mo na product or service for your customers. And aside from that, marami pang other personal competencies na kailangan uh, ma-i... Tag dito, ma, ma-i... Uh, marami pang personal competencies na kailangan na maipakita na is, or maipossess ng isang uh, entrepreneur. The second one is interpersonal competencies. These are your ability to lead, influence, communicate, supervise, negotiate, and control people at all levels. It is the ability to get along with people and motivate people to perform jobs. Entrepreneurs must effectively manage people. Example, communication, engagement, and then dele- delegation. So, kung kanina ang first skill or first competency na kailangan is personal competencies na kung saan kailangan maipossess mo yung mga traits or characteristics na kailangan, this time naman for the interpersonal competencies, these are all the characteristics or traits na kailangan na maipossess mo na may kinalaman on how will you deal with other people. Kaya nga siya interpersonal skills. So, ito yung uh, kung paano ka makasalamuha, mag-manage ng tao, mag-deal with the other different types of people, mag-manage ng tao, yan. 
So, ito yung kay, uh, isa sa mga competencies na kailangan i-possess din. Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag natin na interpersonal competencies. Ayan. Yun nga yung ability mo to lead. Okay? So, sabihin natin na hindi ka naman, ano, uh, parang wala kang ganong uh, kakayanan or hindi mo may possession may possibility na hindi ka mag-success. Okay? So, kailangan nandito itong uh, interpersonal competencies mo. Okay? And then last is... Business competencies, these are set of abilities and knowledge that sets a company apart from its competitors. It also refers to the key characteristics that successful entrepreneurs should have to be successful. So, example of this are business vision, financial management, networking, etc. So, ito naman business competencies, ayan. So, since kayo nga ay nagtitake ng ABM na strand, ayan, and you already uh, took up, Uh, an, uh, ilang business subjects sa rin na take ninyo. So, basically, nagkakaroon na kayo parang na tututunan na ninyo yung different business competencies. Lalo na sa accounting ninyo, di ba? Na kailang accounting na kayo. So, aware na kayo in terms of managing the, uh, in terms of uh, accounting kung paano tatakbo yun. Kung sa, sa, ba, sa isang negosyo, di ba? In terms of accounting, may background na kayo. Alam na ninyo yun. Then aside from that, dun sa management subject ninyo before, nung grade 11 kayo, so nagkaroon na kayo ng background kung paano kayo makakapag-manage. So aside from business competencies, ayan, uh, some of the character or some of the competencies medyo na-earn na rin ninyo on your own. Okay? So yung tatlong competencies na yun ay kailangang maipossess for you to be a successful uh, entrepreneur. Okay? So, dito rin sa business competencies, ayan, uh, ito naman yung may kinalaman na kung paano ninyo patatakbuhin yung isang negosyo. Okay? So, ayan, business vision or uh, kung paano yung i-offer ninyo, ano ibebenta ninyo, paano ninyo ibebenta iyon. Then, uh, yan, in terms of uh, money, kung paano ninyo i-manage yung pera ng business ninyo, ayan. Paano ninyo palalaguin? Paano kayo mag expand So, yun yung mga tinatawag natin na business competencies. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the entrepreneurial process. So, in this entrepreneurial process, ito na kung paano ba mabubuo yung uh, isang business. Okay? So, as simple as five steps lang naman ito. So, yan. It is important to formulate a strategy which should include an articulation of a plan and how this is going to be implemented. This entrepreneurial discipline is often referred to as the entrepreneurial process which involves several stages from the awareness of an opportunity to the realization of a business idea. So, these steps include the following. First is the discovery refers to the recognition of a business idea or the detection of opportunities that could make money for the entrepreneur. So, dito sa discovery, ayan, from the term discover, eto yung parang aalamin mo kung ano kaya yung pang po pwedeng pagkakitaan, ano kaya yung po pwedeng maging negosyo. Halimbawa, kayo, circle of friends ninyo, parang plano ninyo na gumumaka kayo ng sarili ninyong business. So, first step ninyo is discovery. Ano nga ba muna ang po pwedeng pagkakitaan? Ano yung po pwedeng maging negosyo? Okay? So, yun yung tinatawag natin na discovery. And that is the first step in the entrepreneurial process. Second is the development of concept. Gives more details on how the general business idea can be realized. So, dito naman sa development of concept, eto na ngayon, ah, uh, iisipin na ninyo on this process kung paano nga ba kayo kikita. Okay? So, kung kanina, iniisip ninyo kung ano yung po pwedeng pagkakitaan, ano yung pwedeng maging negosyo, ano yung pwedeng maging pwede mong i-offer, this time naman sa development of concept, kung paano ninyo pagkakakitaan yung, yung idea na naisip ninyo on the discovery process. Okay? So, yun po yun sa development of concept. Ito na yung pag-create mo kung paano kayo kikita or yung pag uh, sa ano sa business mismo kung paano ninyo pagkakakitaan yung idea na naisip ninyo on the discovery phase okay then the third one is organizing resources So, describes the process of identifying, sourcing, and financing human, non-human, and other resources needed for the conduct of business So, on this step naman, ayan, uh, kailangan mo munang malaman or ma-identify ninyo 
yung mga sources ninyo. So, basically, connections na to. So, ngayon, halimbawa, naisip na ninyo kung ano yung magiging business ninyo, napag-isipan na rin ninyo kung paano ninyo ito pagkakakitaan. Ngayon, alamin ninyo saan naman kaya kayo pwede makakuha ng mga, sabihin natin, mag- magiging supplier ninyo ng produktong gagawin ninyo or ng service ninyo. Yan, okay? So, aside from the sources ng mismong product na offer ninyo, pati na rin yung funding ng business. Pag-iisipan ninyo kung paano kayo makakakuha, paano ninyo mapopondohan yung negosyo yung gusto ninyong simulan. So, that's the third step which is the organizing resources. Then, the fourth one is the implementation. The process of carrying out the business plan, it covers several activities including the management of human, physical, technological, and financial business of the business. Okay? So, for this implementation, ayan na, actual operation na ito ng business. So, once na yan, tapos na kayo with the discovery, with the development of concept, and then the organizing resources, nakuha na tapos na ninyo yun, pwede na kayo makapag-start up. Okay? So, ito na nga yung implementation. And then, the last one is reaping the returns pertains to the strategies related to the expansion of the business firm. It also covers mechanism for addressing conditions in the business environment that may direct the future of the firm. So, dito naman sa reaping the returns, ayan, once na nagiging successful ang business, syempre, ito na yung opportunity mo para i-expand yung business. Okay? By sabihin natin, i-open mo siya for franchise or mag-open ka ng another branch doong uh, business mo. Okay? So, yan po yung last process which is reaping the returns. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the characteristics of an entrepreneur. For the characteristics of an entrepreneur, first, we have the entrepreneurial traits and creation of value added. So, first one on this is the level of education. Studies have shown that entrepreneurs need some formal education to be able to seize the opportunities presented by inventions, innovations, and other technological developments. So, di ba kung natatandaan ninyo kanin, nung sa previous topic natin, we have the two types of entrepreneur. Kung natatandaan, di ba? Meron tayong macro-entrepreneur and micro-entrepreneur. So, when we say macro-entrepreneur, di ba, ito na yung uh, malalaking uh, Uh, businesses or malalaking entrepreneurs na kung saan ang hawak nilang businesses is yung mga malalaking businesses na. While the uh, micro-entrepreneur naman, kabaliktaran lang nung macro na kung saan small businesses lang ang minamanage or hinahawakan. So, for this first uh, character or first uh, trait is yung level of education nga. Ayan, sabi nga dito na Entrepreneurs need some formal education to be able to seize the opportunities. Yan. So, sa, in terms of level of education, uh, there are some businesses na kung saan uh, hindi naman require ang level of education. ba? Diba? Sabi nga eh, parang iba, parang ginagamit lang to as an alternative sa formal employment. ba? Diba? So, ngayon, in terms of education, yung mga small businesses, kung halimbawa isa kang micro-entrepreneur, po pwede dyan na may, may possibility or may chances na hindi kailangan ng formal education na kung saan hindi naman required ang bachelor's degree or hindi ka naman uh, degree, degree holder wherein kaya mo mapatakbo yun. But in some businesses, kailangan yung uh, degree kailangan nakapagtapos. Bakit? Kasi there are some skills na kailangan, lalo na sa mga malalaking businesses, okay, na kung saan, kailangan na may, na may natapos sila na relevant doon sa patatakbuhin nilang business. Okay? Yan, sabi nga dito, ayan, opportunities presented by inventions, innovations, and other technological developments. So, kung halimbawa ang business mo ay may kinalaman or may involvement ng operations of machines or whatsoever na kailangan ng uh, mataas na skills, okay? So, with that, kailangan na nakapagtapos or nakapag-graduate or degree holder. Okay? So, most of, the, most of the time, ang mga ganong cases is mga Uh, macro entrepreneurs okay but there are still in some cases sa micro entrepreneurs kailangan din ng ganun okay but most of the time 
uh, kapag macro ay micro uh, hindi naman kailangan ng degree okay so yun po yun ha in terms of level education there are instances na may mga businesses sa kailangan required yung nakapag uh, nakatapos ng college but there are some businesses na hindi naman kailangan next is employment status Individuals who become entrepreneurs in developed countries are usually former employees of companies in the formal sector. The choice of pursuing entrepreneurship can be viewed as a step in the entrepreneur's professional development. So in terms of employment status, ayan, some uh, entrepreneurs nga daw ay maaaring nanggaling sa naging isang employee from a private sector. Okay, and then... Ayan, after sa sabihin nating uh, after ng ilang years sa pagtatrabaho, maaaring nakaipon then nag-start up na ng sarili nilang business, okay? So, yun po 'yun. And then next is entrepreneur's wealth. The wealth of the entrepreneur is also an important factor. Usually, mega entrepreneurs source their funds from their own wealth and from their families. Some generate capital for their business from the wealth they have accumulated from their past employment. They can also borrow money from their we- from their wealthy parents. So, in terms of entrepreneurs, wealth, ito yung tumutukoy sa yaman ng isang entrepreneur, okay? Or yung funding or source of fund ng isang entrepreneur. So, yun nga, maaari nga daw na ang source of fund or source of wealth ng isang entrepreneur ay maaaring galing sa yaman ng pamilya or maaari namang napag-ipunan after na magtrabaho ng ilang taon in a private company. And lastly is, pwede daw na, ayan, uh, nag or umutang from a from uh, wealthy parents okay so that is the entrepreneur's wealth the next is risk appetite important factor in undertaking any business venture risks are associated with the uncertainties in the business operations these uncertainties can threaten the survival and stability of a business enterprise usually Entrepreneurs are risk takers. So kung ikaw yung tipo ng tao na willing kang mag-take ng risk, handa kang sumugal, ayan, po pwede kang maging entrepreneur. Kasi nga, ang pagpasok into business ay isang uh, sugal talaga. As in, susugal ka talaga. Kasi hindi mo alam kung magsasuccess yung business or not. Okay? Kaya nga, uh, sinasabi niya na, ayan, entrepreneurs are risk takers. Okay, so sabihin natin nag-stable lang ang business ganyan. Ngayon kapag gusto mo mag-branch out or mag-expand, risk pa din 'yon kasi nga hindi natin alam kung or hindi mo alam as an entrepreneur kung yung i-expand mo ba na yung pag-expand mo ba ay magiging successful or magiging pabigat. So talagang uh, sugal 'yon, isa yung malaking risk. Okay? <coughs> Now, let's proceed with the entrepreneurial traits and entrepreneurial intentions. So, for this, we have two factors, the internal factors and external factors. So, in, in, let's, uh, let's discuss first the internal factors. So, it includes mainly the qualities of individuals such as demographics, personal traits, psychological characteristics, individual skills, prior knowledge, and then social ties. So, for the demographics, ayan, it refers to the gender, marital status, age, and then employment status of individuals who are likely to form entrepreneurial uh, intentions. Ayan, for example, the entrepreneurial activities uh, generally increase with the age but decrease beyond a certain level. So, And also, married individuals are more likely to entertain entrepreneurial intentions than single individuals. So, in terms of uh, gender, marital status, and then age, ayan, karamihan daw na pumapasok into uh, business is mga nasa younger age pa. And then, in terms of marital status, uh, mostly, uh, yung mga, sabi nga, Uh, married individuals yung mga pumapasok din than uh, single okay ang pumapasok into uh, business okay then next is yung uh, personal traits 
For personal traits, there are theoretical bases for the contributions of self-confidence, determination, and enthusiasm, and other positive human qualities in influencing entrepreneurial intentions. However, studies have shown that these personal traits are weak predictors of entrepreneurial intentions. Then, psychological characteristics. Ayan, uh, Traits include a host of qualities, including need for achievement, risk appetite, ayan. So, in terms of, ayan, sa psychological characteristics, pasok din dyan yung uh, pagiging uh, risk taker ng isang entrepreneur. And then, for the uh, individual skills naman, ayan, uh, these are the skills learned from prior M- uh, So, for the individual skills and then prior knowledge, almost the same lang din naman. Ayan. Uh, ayan. Knowledge and skills learned from prior employment are valuable in setting up a business. Thus, vocational know-how, supervisory, and managerial skills acquired from work experience can also predict entrepreneurial intentions and behavior. So, for these individual skills and prior knowledge, ayan, maaari nga nagsimula ka nga daw ng isang business dahil nga may alam ka na sa ganoong bagay. Okay? So, sabihin natin na may alam ka in terms of repairing ng mga uh, cellphone. So, maaari kaya ka nag-venture into, uh, into that business kasi nga may prior knowledge ka na with that type of service. Okay? And then, next is the social ties. Ayan, for the social ties naman, uh, kaya ka daw pumasok uh, into business dahil nga uh, marami kang connections. Uh, in your own, parang alam mo na sa sarili mo na marami kang connections, kaya kapag nag-start up ka ng business, may ano ka na na... may belief ka na na magiging successful to due to your connections. Okay? Then, the other one is the external factor. Yan. For the ex- external factor, we have the environmental support and environmental influence. So, for the environmental support, and many studies have affirmed the positive effects of government, financial institutions, training institutions in setting up business. So, for the environmental support, ito naman yung mga uh, support na nakukuha ng isang entrepreneur from the government. So, may, marami dyan ng mga nagpapatraining ng mga livelihood training, livelihood seminars, na maaaring doon mo nakuha yung skills kaya, kung kaya nag-venture ka into business. Na, na, nakitaan mo ng potential na yung ganong bagay, eh, maaari mong pagkakitaan kaya ka pumasok into business. And then, the environmental influence naman, Ayan, on the other hand, includes regular, regulatory structure, patents, protections, or property rights and competitive environment. So, ayan, uh, government regulations are important particularly in promoting public interest like addressing information asymmetry, limiting negative externalities. Ayan. Okay, so maaari kang pumasok into business due to environmental influence sa kung saan nalalam, uh, may instinct ka na kapag nag-start up ka is uh, parang protected ka by the uh, government uh, regulatory structure. Okay, now, uh, characteristics of Filipino entrepreneurs. Ayan. So in terms of uh, gender daw, ayan, sa tingin ninyo, In terms of gender, sa mga Filipino entrepreneurs, ano ang mas marami? Babae or lalaki? Any idea? Oh, Lovino. Lovino? Bakit di kita naririnig? Ano? Babae. Babae. Okay, sige. Uh, how about others? Agree ba na mas maraming babaeng entrepreneur kaysa sa lalaki? Ayan. According, nasusulat. <laughs> Ayan. It is interesting to note that there are more females than males that are engaged in the early stage. of entrepreneurial activities in Philippines. 
Okay, sabi nga mas marami nga do babae dun sa mga sa start pa lang sa umpisa ng isang business, mas maraming uh, babae ang nag-uumpisa. Okay? However, In the more advanced stage of entrepreneurial activity, the gender proportion of entrepreneurs and managers become more even. This implies that males tend to be more resilient in staying business as females withdraw at the intermediate stage. So, ibig sabihin, babae lang magsisimula pero lalaki ang nagtatapos. Yun, yun. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, mas kaya ng lalaki na uh, patagalin pa yung negosyo. Unlike uh, yung mga babae, parang sa sisimulan lang daw, okay? Pero hindi naman nila kaya i-sustain or i-maintain, kaya gini-give up nila, okay? So, yun po, in terms of gender daw, okay? sa In terms ng Filipino, kar- characteristics ng Filipino entrepreneur. And then, in terms of age naman daw, sa Philippines, yan, mas maraming mga... younger age ang attracted na pumasok into uh, business. Okay? Since, uh, ayan, sabi nga dito, uh, given the extent of youth unemployment in the country, entrepreneurship becomes viable employment option for the young. This result is consistent with the conclusion of entrepreneurship in other developing countries. So, mas maraming ang pumapasok na mga nasa younger age into business uh, in substitute nga daw sa an uh, sa uh, employment sa isang private company so since mahirap nga ang pumasok or mahirap paghanap ng trabaho yung iba nagbe-venture na lang into business okay and then in terms of educational attainment naman almost half of entrepreneurs in the early stage development have finished secondary schools however entrepreneurs that own firms that the mature stage of entrepreneurship have higher levels of education. So, ayan, uh, in terms of, uh, ano daw, uh, tawag dito, early stage development or para nag-uumpisa pa lang ang business, ayan, kapag ganyang klase ng business, mostly, uh, mga nakapag, uh, natap, nakatapos sa ng high school, yung mga ganong klase ng entrepreneurs. But, dun sa mga nang, uh, nasa mature stage na nga daw ng entrepreneurship or nung business, ayan, most of them daw is mga nakatapos naman na ng uh, college, okay? So, yun po ang characteristics ng mga Filipino entrepreneurs. Now, ayan, majority of those engaged, ayan, o oh, ayan, majority of those engaged in the early stage of entrepreneurial activities in the Philippines are in consumer service, including retail, food, personal beauty care, appliance and electronic repair, cleaning services, and laundry services. So, mostly, na mga nag-uumpis ang negosyo, nasa ganyang industry. Okay? Karamihan food, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, nasa food industry. Okay? Then, next... Yan, entrepreneurial decision making. So, you as a person, anong ano kaya paano ka kaya nagde-decide or paano ka nagka come up with your decisions? So, first, we have the critical thinking. It refers to the systematic and rational way of providing an answer to a question. It also explains what is going on. In business, a critical thinking is useful in explaining how a firm can survive and remain stable. Many tools in business analysis make use of analyt- analytical thinking. For example, uh, SWOT, yun nga, yung strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Ayan, SWOT analysis. So, yun po yung tinatag natin na critical thinking. If you were a type of person na kung saan uh, pag nag-isip ka, or nag-come up ka with the decisions, binabalansi mo yung mga bagay-bagay. Yan nga, maaaring gumagamit ka ng SWOT analysis or tinitingnan mo yung mga magiging possible effects o mag- magiging decision mo. Ganong klase ng tao yung tinatag natin na uh, critical thinker. Okay? Ikaw ba? Ganyan ka ba? Or you as a person, ganito ka ba mag-isip? Or kapag nag-come up ka with, the, with your decisions, ayan, uh, are you using a systematic and rational way providing an answer to a question. So, yan, maaaring uh, 
ganyan ka as an entrepreneur. And then the other one naman is creative thinking. So it refers to thought processes that bring about the discovery of new ideas. Unlike critical thinking, it does not follow a systematic or analytical process since it looks at things from different perspectives. Sometimes creative ideas start from a dream. an insight or from mere observation. Okay? So, ikukumpara itong critical, uh, creative thinking sa critic, dun sa ayan, sa critical thinking, ayan, magkaibang magkaiba kasi nga si critical thinking, meron siyang process sa sinusunod or meron siyang systematic way para ka makapag come up with, an, with a decision. So, kung pag sa science, may sinusunod siya na scientific method. Okay, unlike naman dito sa creative thinking, ayan, uh, it all comes from your imagination or for from your insights, okay? So yun po yung tinatawag natin na creative thinking. Para kang lahat na sa isip mo lang, walang walang specific na process, okay? Then next is strategic thinking. It involves thought processes that assess current situation and can be useful in the formulation of plans. It is like critical thinking since it uses an orderly and logical system in its assessment, but it also resembles creative thinking on its growth and future orientation. So when we say strategic, parang almost uh, the same, uh, combination siya ng critical and creative thinking. Okay? Kasi nga, may process pa rin siya na sinusunod. Okay? And, yun nga, uh, meron siyang uh, resemblance with the creative thinking. Yan. In its growth and future orientation. So, yun po yung tatlong uh, uh, entrepreneurial decision making or maaaring maging uh, way kung paano tayo uh, mag-come up with our decision as entrepreneur. Okay, not only at, not only as an entrepreneur but also as a person, okay? Now, yeah, let's proceed with the risks, cognitive adaptability and then entrepreneurial decisions. So, risks, yeah, described as uncertain situations and developments that can increase the probability of loss or business failure. So, yun nga, uncertain situations. Kaya nga sinasabi natin noon say risk yan para kang sumusugal. Okay? So, isa dapat yan sa characteristics ng isang entrepreneur na handa ka dapat sumugal. Ayan. So, meron tayong tinatawag na internal and then external risk. So, internal risks, ayan, dangers coming from the management of resources of a business enterprise. Well, the external risk, threats coming from various environments outside the business firm. So, when we say internal risk, ito yung mga... Uh, maari mga uncertain nga uncertain situations within the business okay so maaring in terms of your uh, supplier or within the management itself sa hierarchy ng management or maari may conflict between different managers so yun yung tinatawag natin na internal risk while the external risk naman yun coming from various environments outside the business firm so maaring sabihin natin sa internal risk If you can still remember the micro environment and then the macro environment, di ba? So, maaaring ang internal risk ay nandudoon manggagaling sa micro environment while the external risk ay yaan yung mga nanggagaling doon sa inyong macro environment. Okay? Now, yan. Risk management is the process of identifying, assessing, and responding to this risk. So, when, yan. From the term itself, risk management, ayan. Maiintindihan naman na ninyo agad yun doon. This, uh, this is how you will manage the risks, the uncertain, uh, uncertain events within the business. Okay? So, yan. Process of identifying, as assessing, and responding to this risk. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na risk management. As simple as managing the risks. ba? Diba? On how will you respond with this. Okay? Then, cognitive adaptability. refers to the ability of ability of individuals to be involved in the process of producing several ways of decision this is, oh, ways of decision making based on the identification and management of changes in their environment it requires qualities of flexibility 
dynamism and self-control on the part of the entrepreneur. So, for the cognitive adaptability, ayan, in short, uh, ayan, kung intindihin lang din ninyo, this is how you will adapt with the changes in terms of your business, okay? Sa so changes in the environment. So, this is how will you adapt, yun, as simple as that, uh, sa mga changes, okay? ba? Diba? Kung natatandaan ninyo sa inyong, uh, sa uh, marketing plan natin before, ba? Diba? Uh, doon sa kung natatandaan ninyo sa uh, micro environment kasama doon yung uh, technological factor di ba in terms of technology yan yan kasi mabilis sa nagbabago ngayon di ba so sabihin natin na ang business ninyo uh, meron na kayong existing na process ganyan tapos meron nga dumadating ngayon ng mga new technologies yan in terms of cognitive adaptability, how will you adapt with the changes? Paano makakasabay yung business mo in terms of that, okay? Kung yung iba nakakapag-provide na ng online services, you, your business, paano kayo makakasabay with that type of changes, okay? So, yun po yung tinatag natin na cognitive adaptability. It means kung paano, mo nga, paano makaka-adapt yung business mo with the changes in the environment, okay? And... That's it.